This is an episode in our Did They Get It Right series. Well, Melanie, I have said this before and I'll say it again. One of the biggest advantages that Masters of the Air has over Band of Brothers is social media. Not only, you know, letting us do this but letting other people comment and share their experiences and share their family stories, you know, as, as the series is going on, if you think about band of brothers in the early two thousands, didn't exist. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and I have a great example for us today on why masters of the air and, and social media, YouTube, why it's, it's a great time for this mini series. And, um, and it helps well, us answer these, these questions of whether yes, they, they it right. get it right. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I want to share a post by Johnny Halliwell. I'm hoping I'm getting that, that name right. And he <laughs> did an Instagram post and he was the actor that played William de Blasio in masters of the air. De Blasio was the tail gunner for Rosenthal's crew, which was the only plane to survive the monster mission in episode five of masters of the air. And this post goes like this. I want to share it with, with the viewers. Johnny shares, it's been a huge honor to play Sergeant William J. de Blasio. I will forever be uh, grateful to be given the chance to step into his shoes and work on this production. I have attached some notes from Bill's diary about the Munster mission as seen in episode five of Masters of the Air Apple TV series. The 100th bomb group were the bravest of men. It was a privilege to put on the suit an experience of a lifetime with the best, kindest, and hardworking people from top to bottom. True excellence. Quote, Lord guard and guide the men who fly through the great spaces of the sky. And Melanie, will you share with us a little bit about the letter that was sent? Yes. So, so yeah, Johnny Hollowell. Now, he um, that name is a little unusual to us because he's actually an English last name. And we're seeing that a lot of the actors are English who are just doing amazing American accents. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we, we have um, from his post on Instagram, we actually have the recollections that were written by William de Blasio. And here's a picture of him that he wrote to Rosie or Rosenthal um, on, his, on Rosenthal's request. He sent this letter to him on March 17th, 2005. Um, and it, but it was a recollection from their Munster mission on October 10th, 1943. He said, Rosie, I did the best I could considering this fading memory of mine. Some parts of this mission stand out very clearly to me, while others, um, such as where we were in the formation, draw a blank. I haven't had a flashback for about seven years now. Maybe they're behind me. I certainly hope so. They are truly a miserable 24 hours close for now. I hope this is what you want. My family has been trying for years to get me to write about this. I simply didn't feel like doing it. So that's that's the intro to the memory that he had written for Rosie. And the memory is from that mission that we just watched in episode five. So here's some of the memories that he wrote. The group as a whole ran into considerable flack, but the fighters were much more of a threat by far than the flack has been. It's said in numerous books that the Munster mission was one of the hardest fought battles for both sides of the entire war. And I, for one, am inclined to agree. Twelve of the group's aircraft were shot down either before bombs away or shortly thereafter, leaving us all by ourselves. I believe at one time we tried to attach ourselves to the 95th bomb group for protection. However, this did not last for long. Flack had knocked out one of the left engines as well as on the right wing, making it impossible to keep up with any formation. After searching in bad weather conditions for our field, we finally found it and landed safely. I remember sitting on the grass and vomiting for what seemed like an eternity. I was asked to secure my guns, which I did. I do not recall whether any of us put in claims for downed aircraft, as this was superficial compared to losing the entire group except one plane. Besides, it wouldn't have done any good as we all knew any aircraft shot down had to be verified by at least one or two aircraft other than your own. So wow. in this memory, um, I, it kind of reveals, I think, some of the things that they got right in the series and maybe some things that, that they didn't. Um, but the first thing um, that we could look at is just 
we saw a picture of Johnny Hallowell and a picture of the Blasio. So now I'll bring up the pictures of them next to each other. Wow. <laughs> now, now, now I'm going to chime in here. As far as getting somebody to look like the real person, they got that right. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. In fact, they, I mean, they look like they could be Ken. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a doppelganger for sure. The the shape of the nose, the eyes, the placement. Now the actor has a, a mustache, but the lip shape, everything is, um, is really spot on. So I think one of the first things we can say is that they, in a lot of cases, they're getting it right when it comes to the look of the actor versus the, the person that they're portraying. Here's a fun look at the, the whole crew. This is the actual crew of Rosenthal. Wow. Um, I wish I could zoom in on this a little bit, but I'll, I'll just kind of leave this up for, for a minute. So you get a, a chance to appreciate those that were really on that plane. That was the, the last one to make it. Um, and then here's a picture of the, the series actors. Yes. So, the, you know, and really the only, I mean, the only difference you see in the look is some of them have mustaches and, you know, yes. people have complained going all oh, the real, real person didn't have a mustache. But I think, I think the screenwriters and the directors have done that. So uh, we as viewers can identify different characters a little bit quicker. Um, you know, yeah, we, we discussed I agree. That. Yeah. yeah, well, and and you said this on, uh, off camera leading up to this, that even with Rosenthal, I don't have his picture, but we'll, we'll be looking at that later. Um, he had a mustache in, in real life. Uh, the actor does in real life, yes. but it helps you spot him. Right. Do you want to elaborate yeah, on that? Especially, you know, the early scenes when they're in the airplane, they have the helmets on, they have everything. So you don't get but just a little bit of their facial. And and like for Rosie and his character, when I see that mustache, I identify real quick. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Rosenthal. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. so I think some of that's done on purpose. So um, you could say, well, they didn't get that right. But I, I think that for the viewer, they did get it right. Right. It's yeah. getting it right for the sake of helping because there's so many characters and there has to be something that's identifiable. And and, um, and I think they do the same with the hair, you know, the different hairstyles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the military, a lot of the hairstyles look the same, but I think they gave in the mini series, different hairstyles to help us as viewers identify quicker and, and follow, follow the story along. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm now, one of the, got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that when I, when I saw this post with Johnny Hallowell, that kind of, I felt a little like, yeah, I got it right. <laughs> was uh -huh. back a couple episodes ago, right after the muster mission, it showed in the series, it showed them being, uh, brought into to be interrogated to talk about which plane went down and they kept saying the name of the plane and the guys are like uh, I don't know it blew up in the air didn't were there any parachutes uh, blew up you know and I was like it seemed like it'd be easier just to say did you see any planes make it you know rather than going one by one but according to de Blasio's memory that he wrote for Rosenthal that never happened um, that it was superficial and interestingly enough he said that it took two I, and I didn't, I didn't realize this as we watched that, but you had to have two, two different planes identify when a plane was shot down or if people bailed out. So it wasn't really official if there was just one witness. So in that case, um, I, they didn't get it right in the series, but we can talk about why they may have included that. Yeah, And, and I'm going to agree with you. Um, and, and this is a personal story for my papa, who was mm -hmm. a B-17 bomber pilot in the 94th bomber group of all the stories, you know, we milk cows together on, on family dairy farm of all the stories I heard. I never heard about debriefing like that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and um, I really wonder if maybe, of course, the navigators were the, the logbook keepers. Maybe they did. But now I'm just speaking from yeah. a pilot story. I never heard that story coming from a, um, my grandfather, who was a B-17 pilot. So. That's an interesting observation. I'm sure they would have had to have those. I I'm sure the debriefings happened. I, I like what you said. I think it was probably more those that were the, it was always the navigator, right. That was keeping track. Cause we saw yes. Crosby at one point be so worried about making sure he the got the right was, time. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so clearly, you know, they were the ones that were handling it, but it was probably a gathering of all the navigators coming together and saying, okay, I saw it. You saw it. Okay. Now that's official. Yes. Um, and of course, when you have one plane, it was, I'm sure that that didn't actually happen, but it was what I thought was interesting about it for me was that as they did go through the planes, 
they'd say the name of the plane and then they'd be like, well, we don't know. They'd say the name of the plane and we don't know. But what was interesting was just getting to hear the names of all the planes because you got the number and then they gave you the nickname of the that plane. Nickname of, and, yeah. and, and I really think the screenwriters had that scene with the whole crew um, for effect to show how many planes yeah. were lost. And you know, kind of yeah. hammered it in, and and I, I don't blame them. I mean, I thought it was great screenwriting. I, I'm yes. not complaining about that, but probably didn't really happen in real life like that. As, as yeah, we, we've discussed. you're right. It makes for good storytelling. It's always the show don't tell approach, yeah. and so they're showing it this way, and so we can appreciate that. Um, but it's just kind of fun when you know, with our did they get it right to to just see what what areas where maybe it's a little bit different than what was shown. So. Anyway, that was great. Thank you so much, John, for doing Look, that. Look forward research. to the next episode. Thank you. <laughs>